working with the complaints of excessive post chemical burn scarring uh, at the lower part of the chin anterior lateral surface of the neck and upper chest and upper arm uh, which happened three years ago because of kerosene explosion uh, with mm -hmm. complaints of limited mouth opening and restricted neck movements uh, his plan for exhibition uh, exhibition and release uh, for the free flaps so. mm -hmm. uh, past history he had sustained a uh, 30 degree uh, total burn surface area 30% of total burn surface area and uh, second degree burns and uh, there was history mm -hmm. of icu admission and acute burns management and uh, general repeated burn dressing under uh, general anesthesia uh, patient with a known case of uh, diabetes and hypertension for 10 years and uh, mm, he has history of very plus poor burns and there is no history of voice change with dysphagia stridor Uh, during the time of burn injury and uh, no history of tracheostomy during the course of treatment mm. patient is slightly underweight underweight is uh, bma is 19.4 and air the examination mouth opening allows only one finger breath uh, bilateral nostrils were patent uh, no loose or missing teeth uh, sideromental and sternometer distance uh, could not be measured neck movement there is restricted flexion extension and rotation and lateral rotation Mm. on inspection there was a fixed flexion deformity of the neck and there were thick fibrous bands from the neck to the, uh, from neck to the upper chin uh, no ulcers or sinuses and no tenderness sternal notch uh, uh, was not palpable thyroid record trichothyroid membrane and trachea were, were not palpable mm. that's also okay so this is what is the most important uh, challenge in this case for us as anesthesiologists mm. Anticipated difficulty. And anticipated difficulty. So common question they will ask you in the exam is how are you going to manage the airway for this patient? So uh, options. Plan A, I will go for awake nasal fiber optic intubation or a tumescent anesthesia which release a scar followed by uh, followed by anesthesia followed by dental anesthesia mm. or. Uh, Or I can insert the uh, nasal airway and uh, and uh, anesthesia insertion and uh, do scar release and then follow the uh, anesthesia. Mm. Uh, or uh, we can release the scar under sedation. Sedation is what? So sedation with ketamines. Ketamines. So those ketamines. So these are the common four uh, options that we are expecting to take. And uh, What are the post-op problems in this case? The mm -hmm. so surgeon has completely people. released the scar. He has replaced all the scar tissue. He has taken a thin thickness graft and placed it in the neck, the release neck. So, what are the post-op requirements for this patient? Uh, it is slightly extended, isn't it? You can keep the graft yes, and then fix uh, the cervical collar so that they don't bend the head. So, what is the most important requirement by the surgeon? He doesn't want the patient to bend the neck, isn't it? Because the graft has to be in place, so positioning should be nicely extended. The patient should be counselled before surgery that post op you have to lie with your neck extension. So invariably they will place the pillow under the shoulder and keep the head extended well, at least for three to four days till the graft settles well. So that should be told and counselled. What are the pre-operative psychological problems in these patients? Sometimes they may have. You know, the patient can have post-traumatic stress disorder, depression. Also, depression can be there. So, if they are psychologically unstable, what is the problem? Post op. Cognitive dysfunction. And they can become delirious. Delirious. They cannot cooperate. Okay. So that is the problem that we have to keep in mind. So, just quickly for presentation or. Uh, Thank you.